first, do you, I'm going to present you a little bit about uh, Silicon Studio first. So Silicon Studio has been created nearly 20 years ago and our first business was uh, middleware development. Now we, the, the company grew up and we are about 300 employees, uh, all based in Tokyo. We have developed a famous game like uh, Bravery Default and uh, we also have, uh, in addition of Zenko, we also have very uh, popular uh, middleware like uh, Mizuchi and Yebis. Mizuchi is a very high-end rendering engine that is used in the gaming industry but also in parallels like non-gaming industry. And Yebis is a high-end post-effect uh, solution that is being used in many uh, AAAs, game AAAs, like uh, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, for example. Why did we decide to, to make Zenko? Zenko started as a part-time research project. One programmer that was actually very frustrated to, as an experienced programmer to, to see the limitation of the, the, the different game engine at, existing at the time. And so he wanted to make something more flexible, something that uh, he could easily extend and work with as an experienced programmer. We started making some research and Zenko started as a, also as a rendering engine. And we, we quickly realized that uh, being only a rendering en engine is, was quite uh, limited because you need to have content to render in your rendering engine and so you need to manage and uh, edit your content. So uh, we need some kind of editor to edit the content and then we wanted to make some uh, uh, special effects. Uh, so we need some editor for special effect and the, the, basically the, the game, uh, the rendering engine got, got bigger and bigger. And at some point we just say, oh, we just need uh, the fuller game engine and that's what our user will need to. So that's why oh, we decided to go for the full, ga full game engine. So now let me explain about the main concept of uh, Zenko and what we are trying to do in Zenko. So the, the current world in gaming is pretty bipolar, one side Unity and one side Unreal. Uh, Unreal users are very uh, happy with the flexibility and uh, the scalability of Unreal. And on the other side, uh, Unity users are very happy with the ease of use and the, the speed of development. And what we are trying to do is actually bringing the both uh, together in the same product. Uh, Zenko. So uh, how do we do that? Of course we go open source. We really believe that the, the future of game, uh, of game engine is, uh, is open source and this allows us to be uh, much more, to, to improve the quality of the engine because people can report, can see the code and report bugs much faster. Uh, so improve quality, also improve, in, improve the agility because uh, bugs are fixed and reported and fixed much faster. Also the support of the community is much better because the people can just see, uh, see the, the code of the engine, and spot the bug and uh, help them together uh, on top of our of course, uh, help. Also it allows uh, people to of course customize the, the engine and uh, we are getting closer to clients so uh, we, we believe that we meet the, the client needs better. The second big decision was to go uh, completely C-sharp. Uh, so actually, to be honest, at the, the beginning, the, the, the development was made in uh, C++. The first year of development was made in C++. But uh, we, we realized that developing in C++, actually, we're losing a lot of time on small uh, issues, uh, like uh, managing memory, managing uh, pointers, a lot of stuff that was not really uh, critical for the project, but just a uh, lot of time because of uh, the language. So we, we wanted to try something else, and the, the main uh, two uh, developers of the project were really fond of C-sharp, so we decided to, uh, to switch to C-sharp. And also we, we saw at the beginning, at that time it was the beginning of uh, Unity, and we saw a new trend for C-sharp, so we, we really thought C-sharp could be a good match. So we switched to C-sharp and we made some early benchmarking and we realized that uh, being pretty careful how you write C-sharp was actually giving the similar performances between uh, C++ and C-sharp. Uh, but on the other hand, like, uh, the, the, the speed of deployment was much, much faster. And uh, it's, of course it was very good for us, but we also realized that it would be the same for our users. So uh, yeah, we would just say, oh, we have to continue with uh, C-sharp. Uh, 
and build all the full engine in C sharp. So uh, yeah, being C sharp and open source actually is a pretty good combination because uh, the, the, the full engine being in C sharp, the code base is much more reduced and it's much uh, so much more easy to read, uh, understand, and extend by our users. Uh, and also being completely C sharp allows the user to access all the different level of the, the engine from the script side. For example, being able to uh, make his own draw call or all the buffer allocations from the, the script. He doesn't need to make any plugin or any kind of extension for that. He can just do it naturally from the script side. So what, what do we propose as, as other solution to improve the flexibility and the scalability of the engine? So one of the first things we, we work on was the, the shader system. We work on an, on an advanced shader system that was very modular so that the user can really uh, extend the, 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 sh the, shader, the shader the way they want it, just, for example, just the way the, the, the vertex position is computed or just the way uh, that you sample in the texture in very in independent way from all the lighting and all the technology. So that's what the, the first thing we did for uh, the flexibility on the graphic side. And now what we are working on is a, a tool, a visual tool to actually be able to completely customize the full uh, rendering pipeline. Uh, of the engine. So for example, control where you compute the shadow, where, where you do the Z-prepass and connect them to the outputs uh, in a visual way to the different other system. Concerning the, the performance and the scalability, we're actually pretty lucky to develop the engine at the same time that the new graphic API like DirectX 12 and Vulkan was released. So we uh, completely base our uh, implementation of the rendering uh, engine on those new API to really be able to get the best for those API and the multi-trading. So we got a pretty, a pretty performant uh, rendering engine on, on that aspect. We also propose uh, other solutions for uh, uh, such as uh, scene streaming so that the user can easily uh, load a very big world partially and just uh, easily load and unload a different part of the scene. Uh, last point for scalability was is that we have a very good uh, inheritance uh, system for, for on the asset side, so that it, um, artist and designer can um, can create a lot of assets and just create dependencies between them and, and up, update the, the parent asset and every, all the, the the modification are automatically propagated to all the assets. And that's very important for a uh, large uh, project where a lot of people are working today there and a lot of update has to be done on the asset side. Our, our expertise in Silicon Studio is really in the middleware side and the, the high-end rendering. So it was very natural for us and very easy with the flexibility of Zenko to add a very good high-end rendering inside the engine. And that was uh, our fo first focus. So we believe that now we really reached the, the state of the art for uh, high-end rendering and realistic rendering. Our, main f uh, our second focus, and uh, the, this will be the, the main focus for this year and, uh, and next year, is uh, VR. We already have VR ready, meaning that we support all the different uh, popular headsets on the market, and also all the, the needed uh, optimization for VR, like uh, single pass rendering, uh, also enabling MSA very easily, and uh, having VR ready just in one click. And we would like, from now on, we would like to, uh, to focus more on the, on the immersion and to uh, really increase the, the immersion feeling of the user in VR. Uh, that's what will work uh, mainly after the release. Zenko will be released uh, in, uh, in April.